Hey, what's going on today, guys? We've got an exciting prospect in store for this video. We're gonna let you compare yourself to an absolutely awesome ride, a track rider, an outdoor rider, or a time trialist. You know, I'm talking about Filippo Ganna. He has done everything at such a young age. What is he, 23 years old? And he set the world record indoors at the four kilometer pursuit, individual pursuit. With a little bit of clever maths, you're gonna be able to compare yourself, your best against Ghana, as if you're riding against him. And answer me this, when do you think you're gonna be lapped by Ghana in like a virtual race? This is what we're gonna find out in a second. Before we get onto that, I'm gonna just ask you a question. What is your power for four minutes? Because if you're gonna do that 4K team pursuit, like if the world record is around four minutes, then it's a good place to start to ask you what's your maximum four minute effort. Well, it's pretty simple to check that out. Just go onto your favorite analysis program, whether that's Strava, whether that's Intervals ICU, Golden Cheetah, Training Peaks, whatever it is, then, you know, bring up your own profile, then go on analysis, power curve, and then click your time period. Then just click along the X axis here to find four minutes and mine all time best on Strava. Well, no, 2019 is around three, four, six watts. If I flip over to intervals ICU and do the same around four minutes. Yeah, around the same time. So remember that figure guys, three, four, five, three, four, six. That's my best. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty poor. It's pretty weak. I'm not claiming I'm any great pursuit rider. Okay, excuses now. I haven't perhaps done an all-out ride for four minutes, but yeah, it's pretty pathetic. But this is what I want to want to find. I want to get some real-world power figures and put them against Ghana and find out what exactly would I do in that pursuit if I was skilled to do it, which I'm not, by the way. But I'm going to find that out. Okay, now the headlines for Ghana are pretty spectacular. In about, what, only a year ago now, he was riding about 4.13, 4 minutes 13. Then he improved it last year to 4.07. And then this year, he did those two spectacular rides back to back, 4.04.252. And then an out of this world ride, 4.02.647. Just think, not only does that break Ashton Lambie's world record that he set in altitude in September, but it also beats Boardman's own record, which he set in the Lotus 108 band position and band bike. You know, that was at 411. Underway, both of them adopting the Graham Aubrey Superman position. And so ahead of them lies just over four minutes to see who takes the gold, who takes the silver. This new position they're riding in, where the big gears they use, means they're often slow off the mark. We've seen Borman already today go through the first kilometre in 108. And they're settling down now. Borman is a little bit down. That's not unusual. We've seen him in the past, slow to start. That 412 might be on the cars. Looks like it's going to happen. It's unbelievable now with two laps to go. Chris Borden has taken the lead and he's, he's increasing it. And, if, and as he goes down the back straight, he just saw the court at the back of Godinelli. This is unbelievable now. So the gold medalist from the Olympic Games has come here. He's ridden himself into the ground, has gone in early. He's broken his own record on this track, but it's Chris Borman that's shown him the way home. This man who says he's going for the hour record on Friday week. He's got the form now. He's shown he's got the speed and the strength. Coming up then to finish 4-10. 4-11, 1-1-4, four, four, a new world record for Chris Borman. And mind-blowing time, he even outdoes the Australian world record from 1993 at the World Championships when they did 4 minutes and 3 seconds, 4 minutes 3.84. How can an individual do better than the entire Australian team as if they were racing him back to back? It's quite phenomenal, guys. Now, for you geeks out there, we do have a little bit of behind-the-scenes info on what Ghana's stats were on these amazing records. The first one, 404, he rode at 58.98 kilometers per hour. He used a 60 chain ring on the front and 14 on the cassette. I think he had 175 millimeter cranks. So his cadence in the first effort was 109. He upped that to 110 for his world record 402 attempt. And he brought his lap times down to 15.15 .15 seconds. 
Now, if you want to look at it in terms of power, we need to look at his biometrics around 76 kilograms, 1.93 meters or 644. His CDA is around about 0.2. Yeah, he may have come under that, but let's just assume for this calculation is 0.2. That means his aerial loss is around about 520 watts. His rolling resistance on the track, remember that super low rolling resistance on that wooden velodrome, 36 watts. His drivetrain efficiency is really good, only about 16 and a half watts loss. And rotational drag, yes, there is such a thing. I know it's minimal with those front discs, front and rear, but there still is an effort to power those wheels going round, if you see what I mean. Rotational drag would be the rotational drag I'm talking about of the wheels rotating. You know, so even if you were static, if you rotated the wheels that fast, how long would they take in power terms to slow down? I'm calculating that at 20 watts. And I'm going to give an extra 14 watts in effort those micro accelerations and decelerations going around the banking, let's say. Not everyone agrees with me on that one, but I think that's a pretty smart ballpark figure. If you add them all up, guys, we're talking about 607 watts. 607 watts for four minute effort. Okay, enough of the stats, guys. Let's have a little bit of fun here. So we've created this just for fun calculator. What would your 4,000 meter track pursuit time be? You can either say I'm in a team or I'm individual. You can go pure watts or watts over CDA. Yes, you can overrule our kind of figure here, but I'm gonna go super lean at 0.18 CDA. So let's say I've got 555 watts what would my track time be? I'd do that in four minutes, 12, the 4K individual pursuit. Let's say more realistically, what was mine? Three, four, five. So I can do three, four, five for four minutes. It would tell me that I do three, four, five. I would get five minutes and one second for my 4K pursuit time. And sadly, <laughs> I would be lapped by Ghana on lap six having covered only 1,290 meters out of 4,000 on my lapometer. Let's say if I did a lot of training and I went up to 400 watts, let's say I got super, super lean and went down to 0.17, then woo, I'd get four minutes 39 on my 4K pursuit and I'd be lapped of eight of 16. I've said here, well, at least you made it halfway. More realistically, I'm probably around yeah, 0.22 and maybe I can get up to six, uh, 366 on my watts. You know, I'd be lapped there on lap 5 of 16 and get a lap uh, 4K pursuit time of 516. Well, you can put your own data in here, guys. You can pretend to be that awesome pursuit rider that you've always wanted to be. Put your data in and see how you line up against the new world record holder, Filippo Ganna, who's frankly out of this world on his stats. Now, somebody's bound to ask me, what would Ganna need to do to come under four minutes dead? Because that's like now a new mythical barrier. We've already said that if he went at 6.07, he'd get his time down at what he is now, four minutes, three seconds. But... Actually, I've already looked at this, and if he can get up to um, 625, which would be an extra 18 watts, and that is not easy. In fact, that is hugely difficult, even for someone of his status, to find 18 extra watts when he's already going at 607 watts for that four-minute duration. It's almost impossible, to be honest. But he could do it at altitude for sure. But if he could find those 18 watts or so from somewhere in that already tight skin suit, then yes, he'd get around about four minutes dead and he'd just smash that world record even further. And incidentally, how would he do if you scaled him up? If you scaled him up to the one hour record, you know, how would he get on against Victor Kampenertz? Well, it turns out that he would need to go at around 446 watts for one hour at sea level to beat Kampenertz. And as it happens, that happens to be the exact same scaling on the power curve as going 625 for four minutes. So you could get to 446 without going up to 625 for four minutes by training for an hour more. Obviously, your training counts. So you could either train for four minutes, 20 minutes, you know, or 60 minutes. Those are different targets, of course. But if he trained specifically for one hour, then there's no reason he couldn't get to 446. So he is a viable candidate 
to get the one hour record. And he could get it now by going to altitude anyway. So let's not forget that. So you've kind of got a three way choice here. Train harder for four minutes and try and get under that four minute barrier. Then you target 625. Train harder for 60 minutes, in which case your target's 446 or go to altitude and you'll probably get both records in one go because at altitude those power numbers are sufficient but it requires a little bit of head scratching to work out whether that's possible because you lose some of your vo2 max at altitude as well we do have an altitude calculator coming soon guys but that's for the future all right guys now if you want to do any of this training either for four minute track pursuit for 60 minute or increasing your 20 minute power or Grand Fondo 100 mile ride. We've got virtually everything here. FTP builder, polarized training, base training over winter, Grand Fondo, high intensity workout, you name it. We've got it under our training peaks plans. And I'm gonna launch a new thing for you guys today because you're such awesome viewers. I'm gonna give you 20% off using the coupon code YouTube for the rest of this month. That is November. So put in the coupon code YouTube and you'll get 20% off any of these plans. And I can tell you about 40 people downloaded these plans last month, guys. Okay, just a bit of fun from Fast Fitness Tips today. But in closing, I'll just tell you, we did also work out one more thing, which is how much time and effort would it take from a perspective of a team pursuit. And the way we did that is we modeled the team pursuit team rotation. So when you start off the line, you're pulling a big effort, let's say around 800 watts to get up to speed. The man on the front is doing his first turn, let's say one to two laps of 550 watts approximately. Man two going exactly the same speed is pulling about 425 watts. Man three pulling about 382. And then in the rotations, there's a little bit of jiggery pokery. I average it out as one swap per lap. That's 16 swaps altogether. About 475 watts needed when swapping. And you've got to subtract that swapping time away from man four because during the swap, nobody's in the fourth man position, not in a stable way. So you've got to take that away from the average. And it turns out if you average out the cost of going around about four minutes for the 4K time as a team, it works out a massive saving compared to an individual. Remember, Ghana's going around at 6.07. You would require somewhere around 4.35 to 4.60 as a team, depending on your rotational strategy, depending on how much energy is saved from how much time man one's on the front, second, third, fourth. It gets quite complicated really quickly, guys. But I'm just saying we did model that in the background and we're gonna do more work on that behind the scenes because I find that quite interesting. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Put your own stats in there and see how you measure up against Philip Gana. Tell me how many laps does it take till he laps you? You'll find this calculator fft.tips slash pursuit. And you'll find our training peaks plans at fft.tips slash tp. All right, guys, happy training. Stay safe out there. See you in the next video, guys, which hopefully will be soon. And it will be our prize announcement. All right, take care.